Here is another example of what I did in video number 21. If you're new, check out the playlist. I have all the links below. I'm using the stuff that I talked about in the previous videos. And in this example, whatever I type in, it doesn't matter. I get a random item drop. It could be a pistol, assault rifle, a shotgun. And then if I press Q, we go out of the loop and quit the game. So just like last time, we have our class diagram. This is the entire picture. We start with the game class. And if I look at that class, game, game has weapon generator as well as the player input. Okay, you can see it here. The entire game loop is this. We get a weapon drop. It's a random weapon drop. We get the weapon data, and then we render it. And then we get the player input to see if we want to keep going or quit the game. So if I run this again, F5, whatever I type, if it's not a Q, we're going to keep repeating the same process over and over again. So we are continuously getting random item drops, anything random between the pistol, the shotgun, and the rifle. And if I type Q and enter, that's this line, we quit the game. So how do we get a random weapon? If we look at the weapon, random weapon generator, we have the random integer. Let's look at the code, random weapon generator. It's got a random integer class. You don't necessarily have to understand fully what's going on inside an object. For example, you might have a microwave in your home. Even if you don't understand how it works, you know input and output of that microwave in this case, we have the topic of generating a random number on your computer. That is a massive topic on its own, and I'm not going to get into that. I don't understand it fully. I just copy pasted some code, and all we have to know is that we have a class, random integer. It's got a certain constructor and a destructor. It exists within the scope of this class, the random weapon generator. Here we see it, and it gives us a random integer to work with. And we use that integer to decide whether we get a pistol, an assault ri rifle, or a shotgun. If you don't understand the object lifecycle, make sure you check out video number 15. When the random weapon generator gets destructed, so does the random integer, so we don't have to worry about it. I would also highly recommend Googling stuff about indirection as well as abstraction, because here we have an indirection in our process. It's a black box that we don't fully understand, but it's still part of the process. All we're doing is directing an outcome to the class, and we're still getting very predictable input and output. It's almost as if you're moving around physical objects in your home. You don't fully understand the insides of every one of those objects, but you can place those things in a certain structure to get whatever outcome that you want. But anyways, let's move on. The random weapon generator is responsible for constructing a bunch of weapon data as well as destructing them. We keep every weapon data inside a inside an std vector and here is another topic don't freak out whenever you see pointers as long as you understand the object life cycle you would know that at the end of the random weapon generator in the end we destroy every weapon data that has been constructed make sure you check out video number 18 as well as the other previous videos on pointers and memory allocation i haven't drawn all the details but this weapon data, this thing, is an abstract idea. And remember that in this series, I said even abstract ideas can be objects on their own. In this case, the game doesn't really care what kind of weapon data that we have, but a weapon data could be a pistol, it could be a shotgun, it could be an assault rifle. We have a bunch of other classes that, it, that inherit from the weapon data. So we have the pistol data, we have the shotgun data, again, I'm using UML here. We also have assault rifle data. These are all individual objects, but a pistol is a weapon data, a shotgun is a weapon data, and assault rifle is another weapon data. So we can say that this weapon data is an abstraction. For example, you might say that I want to buy a weapon. It could mean that you want to buy an AR. It could mean that you want to buy a shotgun. You, you want to buy a pistol. Weapon, in this case, is an abstract layer. And I have a similar thing going on with the item render. If I look at the code, here is the item render. It's an abstraction. The concrete examples could be an assault rifle render. 
these are not exactly renders, but I just I'm just calling it that. We also have pistol renders, and we also have shotgun renders, but they're all item renders. So if I try to draw the UML again with this, we have the item render could be a pistol render, shotgun render, or an assault rifle render. Pistol, I'll say pistol render, shotgun render, rifle render. And these things are data. So you could have a pistol that looks like a shotgun, or a shotgun that looks like a pistol, a rifle that looks more like a pistol, whatever you want. Mods data here refers to the weapon modifications. You could have uh, bonus damage, elemental damage, uh, faster reload speed, whatever. But I haven't started, I haven't finished writing the, this code, so let's not worry about this for now. What's important is that we have a general structure on getting a randomized weapon drop. For your homework, pick your favorite game, and you don't have to do exactly what I did. Pick your favorite game mechanic, whatever it is, and you don't even have to build a full game. It could be a single mechanic represented in some text in your console window. What's important is that you can structure your own solution. No matter how bad it is, you can structure your own solution to solve a problem. And once you understand that, if you can visualize it somehow, you can start making improvements. And let's not worry about graphics for now, because that is going to be just another layer that we're going to add later on. For now, let's focus on managing your data. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.